expensive and it's lightweight. This was our market, real brief thing in our market. 55 million lugs used in California. TKV was a dollar and a quarter, dollar 40 at the time in 1985. Corrugated was 80 to 90 cents. What we were projecting for our box, if we were able to come up with it, would be a dollar, dollar 10 to get that market. That was our goal. Uh, I'm here to tell you today that we're selling at a dollar 10 five years later. Needless to say, we were off on our marks there. We should be higher. <laughs> um, but this was an estimate. This is before we developed anything. We had to have a target to shoot at. Potential market at a dollar, and the reason I did that, I think, because it made it figuring easy, is $55 million that market's worth. We projected what we thought we might be able to do in 86. We were very aggressive. We thought, my gosh, we're developing this 85, 86. We're going to have 5% of that market. Uh, I'll tell you that in 1990, this year, we'll hit 8%, four and a half million cases. This was the first prototype of all those things put together now. In fact, I can tell you, I sketched it on an airplane coming back from California one trip. And when we got back, we built it, and you would be surprised how close it resembles the original prototype. There was some changes in board combinations uh, to uh, adjust our stacking requirements, but basically that was it. Here's our first field test. Ran 2,000 production runs of that prototype in the field, field loading. He loads the box, stacks it on the ground, waits for the swampers to come around. They one on the ground, pitches to the guy in the trailer. They load the trailer, tie it down, head for the cooler, gets stretch wrapped or netted, ends up in the cooler. We've got the channels for the air to move through for forced air cooling, so we cool as I mentioned, about 90 down to 45, 43 degrees in about three and a half hours. And we stacked them three high. And you say, Terry, that didn't look very good. That's what I'm talking about, failure analysis. This was two months, 30 cases high, 23 pounds per case and 95% humidity. And it's not a cascaded box, it's a dry box. It has hard sized liners and things like that, wet strength, mediums. But we had a failure, so after two months, I went out there to view it. In fact, I told the guy, if it starts collapsing, call me, I'll fly right out, which I did. And this is what I found. We need to do a failure analysis. Here's what the bottom looked like. So we unstacked it. I took the bottom three layers, emptied the grapes out, took the bottom three layers, marked their locations, where they were in the, in the pattern. We took them back to our lab, and we did a failure analysis of why those packages failed under that stress load. When it said, all our calculations said, it's supposed to work, guys, but it didn't. We pulled it apart, and fortunately, we found out it was a manufacturing defect. We had hand glued these because it was only 2,000, and we just did a poor job on a few of them. And those few happened to end up on the bottom of one of these stacks. The outcome was we bought an automatic machine which does those ends automatically at 200 a minute and has full coverage glue, so there is no mistakes, and we haven't had a failure since. Now, they don't stack them any three months or five months anymore. As one grower told me, he says, Terry, the grapes are never worth any more than the day I pick them. He put them in a warehouse and Chilean grapes come in and his grape prices go down because nobody wants stored grapes. They want fresh grapes from Chile. So they just are not storing five months anymore. They used to. They used to put them in cold storage and store them for five months. So us people in Michigan have, could have grapes all year round. So what we came up with was this package, and it, what it, I'm not going to go down through it, but really what it does is meets all the requirements we had set out, what we found from the markets, what we found from the retail people, what we found from the packers, they're all covered in this package. Not a short-term thing. Development took about two years with the field tests and everything. But we did end up with a package that looks pretty neat, and as I said, about four and a half million of them this year in the California. It's an isolated market. It's California. It starts in the desert, ends in the San Joaquin Valley, 55 million cases later. And we do have a patent on it, by the way. Corrugated engineering, very quickly. Just want to show you that all the standard grades of board that are available, not 175, not 125, not 200, there's just all a variety of boards. And that's the standard. You can manipulate liners. You can uh, use different liners. All this is saying that triple wall, which is used in bulk bins, watermelon bins, things like that, really is 10 times stronger than 200 pound sea flute. 
pick your grade, pick the job it has to do, and make your box do it. You can engineer the corrugator to do it. Some things that affect compression strength. Laminated medium, something we fought, call power plying. You'll find a brochure in there. It's double medium glued together with a plastic adhesive that hardens. It makes a very rigid piece of board. That's one way to improve stacking strength. Super Stack is a trade name for high performance liners. And you're probably going to hear those from your vendors of corrugated. They talk about Ultra Stack, uh, All Dex, uh, Herculecore, uh, Super Stack. They're all high performance paper. I'll talk a little bit about that. Moisture resistance in produce, in particular, affects compression strength. Wet strength in the medium. It's a type of medium that resists tear. It's what paper towels are made of. You've seen Rosie do her coffee cup thing in a wet paper towel. That's wet strength in paper. It keeps it from tearing. Uh, when we do produce boxes, most of the medium is wet strength. Hard sizing is the outside finish of the box has extra hard hardness to it. It's not as porous as normal board would be. Therefore, it fights off humidity a little better. It fights a little, has a little better water runoff. If a few drops of water, a sprinkle of rain fell on it, it would shed that. So hard sizing is a way to do it. Coatings, cascading, we already talked about. High performance boards, here's just a whole list of everybody's board, including our Superstack and Superstack 2. And power ply is up there. Those are the three PCA products. The rest are Alton Box, uh, Stone, Super Stone Core, Anvil Board, IP, um, Panacraft. They're all basically high performance boards. What is a high performance board? It's achieved mechanically or with additives. Or forget the laminate, that's medium. Mechanically, we, we increase the compressive strength of paper by slowing our mill down. If you remember T down slide about the fibers all being kind of jack strawed that made paper, when we slow our mill down, we orient the fibers more in one direction. And that direction is in the direction of the top to bottom of your box when it finally ends up. So what happens, and other people do it with additives, uh, some of them use uh, formaldehyde, slightly a little bit of formaldehyde, which is a hardening agent, and it makes the paper harder and increases stacking strength. Many of them use mechanical. What's it do? It improves the compression 18%. It's a nice feature. What do you do with that is that you generally lo lower your paper weight. If I lower my paper weight by 9% and increase, go to a high ring, I improve 18%, I really had an improvement for the paper reduction. Cost is main. Cost and solid waste. Let's not forget solid waste. It's becoming a very big thing, and we're trying to do as much as we can to get less paper out of the solid waste stream. And this is one way to do it. I'm not going through this whole thing, but the orange or faded orange are the high performance liners, a makeup of a box using 60 pound liners and 26 pound medium. The blue are your standard grades. You hear about 200 pound, 275 pound. If we took 42 pound liners, regular 200 pound, and made them high performance, we gain 18%, right? What we can do is we could run 52, 26, 52 in high ring, that's less weight now, less paper weight, for 140, and that really be equivalent to 275 pound board, which is 69 pound liners. A lot of paper savings. Chances are, not chances are, definitely a, paper, a cost savings to you folks. It stacks as well as 275 pound. Here's the thing we talked about. Four inches of every corner, down four inches down each wall, represents 60% of whatever the calculator or whatever the compression strength of that box is going to be. So don't put your holes, don't put your vent slots within four inches of any corner. Uh, and you'd be surprised. I go out in the field, <laughs> some of them have them cut right at the corner. They just cut the corner away and can't understand why the box fails. Talk about the number of corners. I just use this size, 47, 39, 36 rectangle. It doesn't really matter what size we're talking about. Use that as 100% value, whatever. What happens if we use that same size box and make it, make it what we call a modified octagonal? And we've done a lot of study on this design because it is our, our patented design before we ever introduced it. What it does, it improves compression 80%. A couple of reasons. We've added more corners, but we've made the panels smaller by doing that. Our length panel isn't quite as long, though. No, it's that long. 
if we reduce the size of the panels, we control bulge. You should know, if you have a long piece of board, it's going to bulge a lot easier than if you have a short piece. So we control bulge, which I said earlier, improves stacking. We've added corners, which improves stacking, for a total of about an 80% improvement. Changing nothing else, same board grade, everything, get yourself an 80% improvement in compression, and in this case, this size was a 13% reduction in board, because it takes less board to do this than this, and to get the same volume, you don't have to add much board in the top, because you have a bigger surface for volume. The mathematics work out on it that we get a 13%, in that size box, a 13% reduction in board. It has to do with how much corner you nip off in it, certainly. Graphic, Steve's gonna talk about that, but basically I just wanna say that there's, there's maybe more than five reasons, and Steve will probably prove this to be tr true. One of the reasons you want a graphics is brand naming. You wanna get a brand name. Uh, Bell Harvest has done a good job of that. Holland Brand's got, done a good job of it. Bell Harvest is just, their packages just have their logo on it. Their brand, they want people to buy the Bell Harvest brand. Whether it's peaches in that box, and this doesn't tell you it's peaches, whether it's apples, whatever it is, they want quality associated with their name, Bell Harvest. And that's what they're trying to get across. Second thing is product identification. Jim Miller Orchards has done a good job of product identification. I mean, I see those in Myers this past year, and I want to tell you, I could be way across a Myers store, and I knew they were selling peaches in the produce department because they had these stacked up from floor up and then peaches on top. And there was no doubt that there was peaches being sold in the produce market. He's also done the brand. He has his own logo and he's identifying quality with his own brand name. Quality image, that's a good example of quality image also. You'd have to believe there's quality peaches in that package. Uh, retail consumer. Again, this is gonna attract that consumer to come over and, and pick up some peaches because you can almost taste them. Terminal warehouse, that is important. His package is recognized in the terminal warehouse right now, I can tell you, after one year. But Bell Harvest does the same thing. Holland Brands does the same thing. It's, it's terminal identification. They tend to identify Holland Brands with a certain kind of produce. Trends, Tom asked me to talk about trends very quickly. I run through it. what I've seen. I, I travel around this country in Central America, and very briefly, this is what I see happening, and it may sound like they're contradicting one another. Bulk packaging, I see more of this happening. Where they've, you saw the watermelon package being in a retail outlet be moved right on the floor. Seeing preprint liners on bulk packages of potatoes, cabbage, cauliflower. They're moving it in in bulk and just selling it out. Apples, Bell Harvest did a big thing on that this year, bagged apples in bulk. Potatoes in bulk, bagged potatoes. So I see that happening around the country. Retail chains, the larger chains, are really pushing that. I also see smaller containers, and I think that's probably more in the food service area. The Cisco's, the Gordon Food type of food service. They may not want 50 pounds of cabbage. They may want 20 pounds of cabbage. Either that or they have to break the box open and, and pack out 20 pounds. So I think they're gonna, you're going to see a push from those people for smaller containers, smaller weight. Uh, open display top corrugate, I see that happening, particularly in the prepacks corn, uh, you'll have a dozen pre-packs of three years of corn or four years of corn for a pre-pack in an open top tray, which goes right on your produce shelf. So I see that happening. Uh, pre-packs, definitely. There are more and more pre-packs all the time. And uh, they're in the molded fiber trays, they're in the uh, rigid trays with uh, stretch wrap over top. They're in semi-rigid, pre-formed uh, clamshell type trays. Uh, I think what you're going to see is, is more towards the molded fiber trays in the marketplace. I, I see a certain amount of uh, resistance to the plastic even today in the, in the produce field. There's a lot of it out there. We make plastic. We make both. But uh, I, I hear some resistance to the plastic in the marketplace. More palletized loads. That's, that's finally taking off in the east in Florida. They're finally realizing they need to palletize their loads for shipment, particularly to large chains. They just do not want to receive a floor-loaded truck at a large chain terminal. Just, just don't want to have to handle that. And uh, concern for quality is always a, a concern, and that's your ultimate buyer. 
And I think you're going to see that, particularly in your chain store buyers. They're just going to demand better quality produce. And the way to do that is through better packaging. So having said all that, and my time is up, I just wanted to point something out to that I'm sure you all know is true. Time is just nature's way of keeping everything from happening at once. And I find that so true. It takes about two years to come up with a good package. Thanks. I'll give this to Steve. You did an outstanding job of uh, putting some of the things we saw this morning into actual perspective there with, uh, with the packaging and uh, concepts and ideas we can all take from. Uh, why don't we take a, a two-minute stretch break if you need to do that. I know you've been sitting after lunch. We'll get things wired up and squared away for our, one of our... is a graphic specialist there with Packaging Corporation and is going to talk